Welcome, I'm Jonathan Kay. Welcome to the webinar about all about those states, a really exciting new feature in Sims you Share. Um, now, to start out, I really wanna say, well, what is a state? Uh, let's get our terminology together. What I'm talking about as a state is really a snapshot of some set of conditions. So let's say incipient, a knockdown, a fire extension. So in this picture over here, you see I have three views an alpha, a delta, and a first floor view that I would consider to be in the same state. So your locations in Sims you share uh, are gonna be different, but you're gonna be talking about, well, the current condition or the current set of conditions is gonna be the state. As a snapshot of a set of conditions, here's some more examples. I mentioned incipient arrival condition. That might be smoke and fire showing out of the alpha and Charlie side. That still is the current state. Uh, fire extension to the second floor, another state. Um, uh, fire extension to exposure, these are all different states. Now, those are states that are normally things that evolve, but you can also have conditions that result from some of the crew actions, doing good things, putting water on the fire, vertically ventilating at a certain spot, things like that. That might be considered another state. So you, again, you're gonna have several locations that, in, that all reflect a, one state knockdown. And so what will happen is you'll create a set of your slides for each location tied to that specific state. You're going to organize all your, let's say your, your walk around, your Delta, your Alpha Bravo for incipient, and you're going to create another set of, of locations of slides in terms of Sims you share for your extension. So in this example here, you see the Delta, this incipient state, we have some smoke from the Delta side, a little bit of fire on that Alpha Delta corner. In our extension state, we'll have a location that will have more fire in the window. And correspondingly, the Alpha and Bravo conditions for extension would support, would have the same uh, conditions that you're seeing here in Delta, but obviously viewed from those locations. Now states are important because obviously real fire ground conditions evolve and we wanna be able to train on more than just one snapshot. I mean, you can certainly do size ups based on a single condition, but you wanna also see how the decision making is gonna affect the consequences and how their decisions are gonna change based on how the conditions change. So when you start doing more involved training with multiple states, multiple conditions, that's gonna give you more depth about, um, about how your your commanders and how your team are working. Now, Sims you Share version 2.9.3 adds some important features to make creating states easier. So the states mechanism I'm gonna show you exists in earlier versions as well. But now that we're doing more intermediate and advanced training with states, we wanted to make it easier for developers to create states. So I'm gonna talk about that. Talking about also those changes. So. We're gonna talk all about these different states and how you create them, what they mean. Now let's just sort of take a step back and look at what a location in Sims you share means. A location is just like a slide. So for example, you have your first location, it automatically is called initial location. Maybe some of you discovered that. Of course you can rename them. And as you add new locations, you name them to what you want, like Bravo, Charlie, Delta. These are just like slides in PowerPoint. And then what you do is you set up your navigation to jump among those locations. So you have, let's say your alpha, left going to Bravo, right going to Delta, and so forth. But now locations don't just have to be, have, have to be distinct. Um, they, the location can actually be a picture of the different physical location, or it can be the same location with a different condition or different state. So you can make a, a slide or a location, for example, that has Bravo incipient, Bravo knockdown, Bravo extension. So as you create your states, you're gonna to have to create the conditions, how they look for the different states. So you're gonna define, okay, I wanna do incipient, I wanna do knockdown. Well, I'm gonna then need possibly an Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta with those, uh, with those particular conditions. So for example, if you have, let's say you're just creating your first simulation, you have A, B, C, D, and interior. So you've got five slides there. And that one is gonna be the arrival. We'll just call it incipient. If you wanna create a new state to show the evolution, let's say you're gonna create an extension state that's in your mind. 
but really what you have to do practically is create another set of five slides. And each of those slides that uh, well, I show you here in the middle row, each of those next five slides would show the conditions for whatever you want to show is happening during fire extension. Then similarly, you may want to create a knockdown state or a condition. And so you're going to create five more slides that each reflect the location under that condition. So if in this example, if you have a simulation with five locations, you really need to have five different physical locations. You would have to develop 15 different slides and each one being for a location and whatever that condition for the, the current state that you want to, um, you don't want it to show. So now the purpose of states is help you organize your simulations. Um, but typically using states in this mechanism I'm going to show you is going to be for multi-company exercises. Um, and what I'll show you over here, for example, in this picture, we have engine two and battalion one. These are separate screens. And you'll see on our CTC, which is the multi-company exercise capability, you'll see we have it's showing you the, the instructor there that battalion one is at the alpha, this says AW, and engine one is at the Charlie and W. So what we've done here, it's very, very tiny, we'll get into more, but the W is put into square brackets. And that's how in Sims you share, we say what the state is. And by, if we can specify the state by the name using square brackets, Sims you share is gonna help us a lot. If you just named your slide A knockdown, B knockdown, that's perfectly fine but you're not gonna get the benefit of the mechanism I'm show, gonna show you about how Sims you share can help you change states and organize things much. So you can name your locations anything you want, A, A knock, B extension. But if you're, what we're gonna see is when you name your locations, just when you give it a name or you rename them with square brackets and then some word or a set of words inside those square brackets, meaning the state, You'll see how it's like AW, CW. In this case, W, the person was wanting it to be um, worse condition, worse, the worst condition, as opposed to the B in brackets being better condition. And it doesn't just have to be a single letter. It can be a whole word. It can even be two words. But you want to be somewhat concise. So when you name, we're going to see what happens when Sims you share recognizes if you use that convention to say, let's say, a location name, and then in square brackets, make it a, make the state name. So um, what, you'll what you'll notice here, the arrow is pointing to, very small, we're gonna see this in action, is that when you define your locations like that, Sims you share then will give you a little drop-down box. And what this will do is then let you change the state for everyone all at once. So and we're gonna see how this works and why it's an advantage, rather than uh, individually necessarily moving each token to the corresponding position for the condition you want, you'll be able to change all the users at one time into their corresponding location for that particular state. So in terms of states, we just call the empty state, the initial state is what you create, what you, when you create your locations, that's going into the empty initial state. It's not designated as any state, but obviously the conditions can be anything that you want them to be. They don't have to be in the same condition. But um, if you're defining a set of states, all the locations that don't have the square bracket markers are considered to be in the same empty state. So now when you wanna actually identify a location, you wanna tie a location as part of a state, what you wanna do is name your location with that uh, suffix within square bracket. So for example, if I had side A, and I wanna say this location I'm making is for knockdown, I would say A, I could do A or side A, and then in square brackets, knock. Now that's gonna be a lot of work creating all your slides. So you create A, knock, B, knock, C, knock, and then you have to tie them all together. Or now, more easily with version 2.9.3, we now actually have a way that you just create a, 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 there's a thing here that says create fill state. And I'll show you what that actually means right now. So if I go here, I'm gonna go in, and I've got a handy dandy, I'm gonna edit, I have an example house, edit my example house. So here I put an incipient label here, I've got my A and I've tied this already A, there's B, C, D. And I can, so I've tied these all together, there are four slides and I'll go back here to show you. Go to location menu, you'll see Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. And so I don't have any square bracket marks here, 
this is all, these are whatever slides they are, whatever the condition. But now let's say I want to make a, um, a, a, an extension. Let's say this is going to be my incipient, but I want to make an extension uh, state. Now, normally what I'd do with, before the changes in 2.9.3, what I would do is I'd say create a new location, and you can still do this. I'd say, okay, I want to say alpha, and let me put um, ext for extension. And so now I could go get the alpha picture or I could just copy alpha's assets like that. And now I hit create. If you notice, now we're gonna be editing alpha ext. And you'll see here that that's different. You see how alpha here and alpha ext, those are separate. Now I have this thing saying incipient because it copied all of the smoke and fire and everything from alpha into this alpha exterior. So now I have to go in and modify it. And I'm just gonna go and modify this and call this one um, extension. And just so also visually, we can actually see the difference. I'm gonna go and add in another smoke. So I'll just go here and say, let me go and get a turbulent smoke. And I'll just stick it in the middle of the garage. So now alpha extension has this smoke. It has the, the title there. So we can see the difference. Alpha has incipient, doesn't have it. Alpha extension has it here. So we could go through and do the exact same thing with Bravo Charlie Delta. And then um, if we notice here when we're in extension and I hit play, you see, I don't have any navigation anymore because now I'm in a location and this location needs to have set up the navigation. Whereas when I was in alpha, I already had set up, I'm gonna hit play. You see, I already had set up the Bravo. So if we were to create this state manually, I would have to create the new location. I'd have to set up the interaction, the navigation. And it's a fair amount of work. And especially if I create a couple states. So what we did is we made that easier. So if you, um, what we do is you go to manage location. If, if the scenario already has an EXT in, or has a square bracket, Sims you share recognizes, oh, you already want to use state. So it adds and state. Otherwise this would say just manage location. So I go to manage location here. Now we see over here, instead of creating each new, doing a new slide and copy and all that, I can go here and say, create fill state. And all I have to do now is say create, it says create the new state name. Now, if it's a completely new state name, I just type it in, but I happen to make it here EXT. I know because I am I want to basically create the other sides or all of the locations for this state. So I put EXT. Now, SimGU share recognizes it exists already. So what it, instead of creating all the locations, it's going to use what you already have, but it's going to fill in the missing locations. So when I hit OK, and I'm going to say, what state should I copy from? So we're creating a new state. What conditions, because we need to start from something, what conditions should I start, uh, start in? So I'm going to say, copy the stuff from the empty state name. And you'd have other conditions here, as we'll see. And notice what happened. Now, Sims you share added Bravo Delta Charlie. Now, if I don't have a state, let's say I want to do knockdown. I'm going to go here and say, create fill state. And I'm going to say, knockdown, knock. I hit OK, and now you see I can copy from empty or ext. It doesn't matter if we know they're the same right now. I'm going to copy ext, and now see it has Bravo, Delta, all that stuff there. Now, those locations are pretty much all the same. I mean, alpha right now, alpha extension, we did put extension there. So let's see what I uh, think you may think what, what is going to be alpha knockdown that has extension in it as well. So. I'm gonna go here, we're in alpha knockdown. I'm just going to, um, let's see, I actually, I didn't hit the text, I hit, I hit the, the smoke, I'm gonna go here. So we, not, we right now are in knockdown. Whoop. We're in knockdown. And so now if I look here, let's go back and see, we have alpha, which is our incipient. If I go here and say alpha extension, we're in extension. And now if I go to, Al, uh, go to alpha knockdown, and I can actually use as a convenience function here, you'll see if I do control right arrow, it'll take me to the next one. And watch over here, so this is alpha extension. Now it's Bravo, Delta, Charlie, Bravo, Delta, Alpha. So this is there, it's our knockdown. I'm gonna go and change this one here so we can actually see it. It looks a little bit, I mean, obviously we would do a much better job if we wanted to make a real knockdown but I'll just put it so it visually is very distinct. So now what I've got here, so now I have all these locations and now I got to go through doing all those walk arounds. If you remember when we created originally the alpha extension state, we didn't have the navigation. 
we had to go, we would have to go and do the walk rounds. But when you use that create fill state, it will automatically link up all the locations as they were in your original state. So we said, use the locations Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. So if I go to Alpha Extension now, watch what happens, hit play, it's added in the locations, I'm sorry, they added in the navigation based on what the source was, which the source was the original state. The, so the, the, where we had A, B, C, and D, it's copied in, even though we're in the extension state. And, um, and I go, like I said, a delta. This is saying delta incipient, but it really, if you see over here, it's because it was copying in delta. But if I now go delta and I say here, not incipient, but I say um, that this is now extension, you'll see that it actually copied this thing. So you you're really are moving along the correct states. You see there's alpha extension and delta extension. So we would, we'd adjust each of the slides appropriately. But now notice here, I can't really get to the incipient. I have no, I, I can do my loop here, which is great. And this is good for the CTC where you don't want to actually let the user change the state. But if you want the user to change, let's say you're teaching in front of a class and you now have, um, I'm going to go here to alpha. And at some point you're here at alpha and at some point now you want to go to extension. You don't have any way of getting to the extension. So if you're just using this in front of a class, you're running the show, what you want to do is have some sort of arrow that will take you to another state. So what I do, this is kind of by convention, but certainly whatever works best for you. If I'm in alpha, I hit set navigation. And I like to use these middle arrows, these middle semicircle. I'm gonna click up here to go from, so now see from alpha up goes to alpha extension. So now if I'm here in alpha and I go, there's that. And now if I go up here, you'll see that now as I go around, notice we're still in extension. If I go down, we're in incipient. So that create state really helps you out because it not only creates copies of all the locations, but it also sets up the navigation. That saves you a lot of time. Now you can always do it sort of the old school way of individually and in setting up the navigation. But um, let me show you some other things here, some convenience things as you go in uh, for, for other things you can do with states. I can do things like sorting the locations if it's kind of out. I can sort alphabetically, I can sort by state or all along the rows, this is for the CTC. So if I do, you'll see this in a moment. So you see it, it, it'll lay out all your locations along the rows of the CTC. And so each, each, each uh, row, um, each column will have the location, each row would have the different state. But if you'd rather have another um, orientation where the states are represented in columns, then you can also do a sort by column. And also rename state and delete state. This is a convenience. It goes through all the locations of a particular state and changes the name. So if, let's say I didn't want EXT. I said, oh, I didn't want that. I want to make it more uh, longer. I say rename state. I say, okay, EXT, and I'm going to now call this one the extension state. I hit yes, and now processing, and now you see they're all named extension. So that's just more convenient than having to rename each individual location. So now let's say we've got our house like this with the examples. Um, so let's go back and see in the CTC how this looks. So now if I'm gonna finish editing over here, I'm gonna go and upload this simulation to the CTC, the sim cloud. I hit, I'm gonna go over here and now there's my example house. I'm gonna upload it, hit start. Now I actually left in that individual arrow. If you remember, to go from incipient, let's look at the navigation, incipient to, um, to alpha extension. But in the CTC, I don't wanna let someone who's navigating around go to the extension. The instructor is gonna have to do that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go and remove it and we're gonna have another scenario. I'm gonna hit done and I'm gonna go back over here, finish this up. I'm gonna rename this one to say rename it and I'm gonna say rename um, with, with states. I'm gonna say, this is, this is gonna have, I'm sorry, rename for CTC. So we're gonna have it there. So that way we'll be able to tell the difference between this one and the one, you'll see this in a moment. So I'm gonna upload example house. So example house for CTC will not let the users go up uh, from incipient to, to extension. I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna example house, and we start that there. Now, just to see another, a lot of our examples already are done with states. So if you're familiar with like 120 Myrtle, I use that a lot. 
you'll see here that this is has the A, A, B, A, W, A, D. So these are all arranged um, by state, by their, their the, uh, the location name and then state. So that's sort of the mystery if you ever wondered why the B, W, D and why they're named like that. So let's go into the CTC now and see what we're looking at. So I'm gonna go here, home. I've already logged in. If you notice here, a little bit small, I'll make it bigger. It's all, we've got example house and let's see what example house looks like. And you see there's example house. Let me go in and you see we have, um, oh, oh, that's, uh, that's something that uh, we've got, a, a, um, it's incipient, incipient. Now I can go back over to alpha and I can go up to that. So we're set with that. Um, and so you can see this is our extension. So now um, I'm over here and let's take a look at our example house for CTC. So over here, example house for CTC is not gonna have that center button. Notice over here, I can go around, but I can't, I can't make it go up or down. So in this situation, this is why for the CTC, we were running multiple players let me go over here. Looks like someone is running. So I'm going to go here and create a new one, which will be one, two, three, Main Street. And now the code, I'm going to just make this main. And I'm going to say, let's do the example house for CTC. Hit create, hit start. And you'll see there's our, there are locations. And you'll see, now when you have the states, it automatically will make the uh, light gray for the current state and the dark gray for the non-current state. And so here, if I now decide as the instructor to change it to extension, see how I can go and change the current state. And you'll see there's actually some more. Now this over here, we made it so there are four locations. Um, and so it's saying location for row three, but if I set this up to four, you'll see now they all evenly spread out over the row. So now if I wanna have a user come in, let me go in web client here. I'll bring this guy in and this is gonna be, let's say it's gonna be engine one. And now I'm gonna say exercise code main and I hit create. There's that. And so now if we look over, oops, let's see if I go and pull this out, I'm gonna pull it out over here. You'll see there is, um, there's engine one. And you see as I move around, Notice here, since I didn't leave that arrow in the middle, I can't actually, um, I can't move to different condition. I would have to have the instructor go and manually move me to that condition. And you'll see here now extension, you'll see it says extension, we've got our, our smoke over here, but now I'm gonna move around. So you see, this is really convenient. When I wanna change the condition, all I have to do for all the users is go here and change it in that drop down. Now with one person, it's not a big deal to just drag and drop, but imagine you have a couple people. So I'm gonna go now over here and add in here, I'm gonna go to start my exercise. With Sims you share, I'm gonna to go to CTC server, connect, I say exercise code, main, and, and I'm gonna call this one app one. I don't need to download the scenario because it's already on here. And so there is now, there's, you can see now I have both. Let me just try and try and arrange this here so you can see. Oh, it looks like I just got out of that. I clicked on the wrong button there. There I go. Okay, so we're back over here. So now I have, uh, it looks like I gotta go and join the exercise. Let's see, there it is, one, two, three, Main Street. And I'm gonna say join it. And there we are. And I'm gonna go back to the four per row. So now you'll see as, as app one moves around, now the idea is if I wanted to change to a knockdown or extension, before without this drop down, I would have to move each user individually into the right box. But now all I have to do is say, okay, move everyone to the extension and Sims Share automatically will move the locations, the move the participants into their corresponding location. And it does that because it knows that it knows Charlie in the empty state is is for the for this. Um, excuse me. It knows that Charlie for this is for the extension is appropriate for the extension state, 
versus the empty state or the knockdown state. And I can also really just drag, if I clicked and drag someone over here, it would also change the state. So let me go here and click and drag. If I, once it knows that it's crossing the state boundary, it then changes all the users. So a lot of power here. Now, not only just with two, imagine it's like three, four, five, or 10 people. You don't have to individually move them and they all change pretty much at the same time. That's really the power of states. And we're very excited about introducing this to make it easier to make more complex kinds of simulations that are more natural, where you have different conditions and want to evolve. Of course, um, you want to sort of proceed at your own pace, do things, uh, if it's more natural to you, just make certain slides without this mechanism. We certainly encourage that, but we just want to let you know this feature exists to really be able to make simulations that, um, that are much easier to manage and also much easier to develop. Appreciate your time. Thank you. I'm, I'll open this up for questions right now. If you have any questions, just please feel to feel free to put them in the chat window or in the Q and A. Um, and I'm going to stop the recording. Actually, I'll see if anyone has any questions before I stop the recording because people might want to see that in the recording. Again, the recording will be available either later today or tomorrow morning on our webinar archive page. On behalf of Danielle, Steve, uh, Ryan, and myself, really thank you for joining us here. If you have other suggestions for webinars, want to see things, please, uh, please feel free to let us know.